I've talked about different aspects of organ donation and transplantation on the show in the past. And today I'd like to look at a different topic under the organ donation umbrella, and it's called kidney pair donations or parrot exchanges. Joining me now to shed some light on this topic is Harvey Mysell. Harvey is the founder of the Living Kidney Donors Network, and he himself is a two-time kidney transplant recipient. Hi, Harvey, and welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, Robert. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start, because there may be a lot of people that are not aware of this topic. And uh, so, can, can you go ahead and start talking about what are kidney pair donations? Yeah, uh, kidney pair donations, uh, swaps, uh, paired exchanges, kind of as you said, has uh, many names. But one of the challenges when you're in need of a kidney transplant and you have, you know, an angel, you have someone that wants to donate to you, is that about a third of them are not compatible with you, meaning that they're healthy enough to donate, so they've passed that part of it. You know, they're a suitable donor, but they have an incompatibility. And they're usually one of two uh, issues that are there, either blood type incompatible or the other being you have, you being the recipient, uh, have these antibodies that have developed in your blood and those antibodies would attack the organ from that individual. So that individual can't donate to you. And in the past, they would say to this potential donor, thank you very much, goodbye, because there's nothing else that they can do. Uh, but these paired exchanges have opened up the opportunity uh, for them to benefit their uh, the person they wanted to donate to, but not directly, but indirectly. Uh, the way they work very simply, uh, a paired exchange, let's say both you and I are in need of a kidney transplant. We both have someone that wants to donate, but they're not compatible with us. They do a quick swap or they match us up. Your donor is compatible with me and my donor is compatible with you. So that's a very simple two-way paired exchange. And they can be three pair, five pair, ten pair. The largest they did was a 55 pair uh, paired exchange. Uh, it's not done, obviously, in one day. It's done over a period of time, you know, weeks, uh, different transplant hospitals. And for my second transplant, I was involved in a three-way paired exchange. So that's basically how they work. Okay. Now, I, I do have some familiarity with organ and tissue donation and transplantation, but I was... This is the first time I really heard of this. Is this something that's widely available? It is widely available. Most hospitals do it now. Um, but the challenge is that it's done in a in a way that uh, many people who need a paired exchange, they have an incompatible donor, uh, are unaware that uh, of, of the different options that are available to them. Basically, paired exchanges is a numbers game meaning that if, let's say, there's a pool of incompatible donors, let's say there's a pool of 20 of them, and there's another pool of 100, it's more likely that you'll get matched up in the pool of 100 uh, in in general terms. Obviously, if the pool of of the 100 is made up of uh, many people that are very difficult to match up, that would impact it. But uh, just generally speaking, it's a, it's a numbers game. You want to be in a bigger pool, and many people are unaware that the hospital they're working with doesn't provide them all of the information about paired exchanges and the number of pools that are available. It's uh, Unfortunately, hospitals don't share their incompatible pairs um, you know, there's one uh, deceased donor uh, waiting list uh, nationally, but there are potentially hundreds of different paired exchange uh, lists that you can get on. And so that's a challenge that, that people aren't aware of. Yeah, you, you kind of touched on, on some of this, but so what, what are the, the clear benefits of the KPDs? Well, the clear benefit is, uh, you know, like I said, about a third of the uh, donors that come in to donate to someone are not compatible. So those that's a a big number of a significant number of people that need to get involved in these paired exchanges. And uh, like.
like I said, efficiency isn't as, uh, it doesn't work as efficient as it could. So say, for example, uh, there are two transplant hospitals in a, in a city. They could be, you know, a mile away from each other. Usually they don't share their lists of incompatible pairs. So in our example, you could be at hospital A, I can be at hospital B down the road. Uh, the swap would work perfectly, but they don't communicate with each other. And that's where the, what I call the conundrum lies for the individual, that the hospitals often don't tell them about this conundrum or that they are not taking advantage uh, of all of these other pools that are out there. All right. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add on this topic, uh, Harvey? Well, you know, the benefits are significant, as you said, uh, that the opportunity to get a transplant and not have to wait on, on the list. You know, you've got 100,000 people waiting for a kidney transplant and thousands of incompatible pairs out there. And it would be nice uh, if there was one, uh, one uh, list of or one pool of incompatible pairs that were there. But the way it works out, there aren't. Um, there are three national uh, uh, co-ops. Technically, they're not co-ops, but uh, hospitals will uh, be a participating hospital with, with one or more of these national groups. And that's one way of increasing the likelihood of your getting involved in a paired exchange. All right. Let, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, you are the president and you, the founder of the Living Kidney Donors Network. Can you tell my audience a little bit about uh, your organization, how it was formed, and, and essentially what you guys do. Sure. My first transplant was in 2007. I'd known about my condition. It's a genetic condition called polycystic kidney disease. As the years go by, cysts grow on your kidneys and, and uh, your, your function decreases. And so uh, it took 20 years for that to happen, but I was told when I was 55, you need a transplant. And so I started to look and try to understand the living donation side because I had watched the waiting list grow. Uh, the wait is five, six, seven years and uh, uh, looking for an organization. How do you ask someone to donate? And I didn't find such an organization. I was very fortunate. My wife uh, was uh, compatible with me. She donated. Both of us recovered very quickly. And I realized from what I learned, I can help others. And so I started uh, LKDN and uh, we're 501c3. And I've helped uh, hundreds of people through the transplant process, both recipients and donors. In fact, helping donors has been a, one of the pleasant surprises. I never thought that I'd be such a resource for them. But people are afraid to ask someone to donate. And so I do these workshops and webinars and, you know, personally counsel people. And I tell them, you don't need to ask anyone. Just tell your story. And if you're good at telling your story and providing the information, then people are will know what your need is, that your living donor is a, a beneficial or preferable than a deceased uh, donor kidney. You don't have to wait, obviously, and they last about twice as long as a deceased donor, eight years on the deceased donor side and about 17 years on average for a living donor. Um, so it's significant. And I tell people it's like looking for a job. You don't walk around telling people I want that job or, you know, I need a job. You tell your story, especially when you're interviewing. And if you're good at telling your story and people like you, and it's kind of similar with needing a, uh, uh, a kidney. Uh, social media has been very, very helpful in getting the word out. Um, but there are good people out there uh, that want to help. Does the LKDN have any association with the organ procurement organizations? No, I don't. Uh, the OPOs uh, are involved in deceased donation. They're the ones that facilitate deceased donor transactions, so to speak. Uh, they're brought in and they bring in the doctors when uh, someone is brain dead and they see if the organs are available uh, from that person. And if they are, the OPO then looks on the waiting list and calls hospital A for a kidney. You know, you have Joe Smith on your waiting list. We have an organ for him. And the same thing with livers and hearts. And that's their main responsibility. Um, 
they don't really have a role to play uh, on uh, with living donation, but uh, some of them get involved in donor, you know, living donor education, but not many. So it's a uh, they really don't uh, get involved at all uh, on the practical side, just on education a bit. Okay, now. If- if there's a listener out there that wants to learn more about the Living Kidney Donors Network or kidney pair donations, where can they go to find out more information? Sure. Our website is uh, just the initials of the name of the organization, just www.lkdn, a Living Kidney Donors Network, dot org. That's lkdn.org. Or they can uh, call me. I'm in Chicago. The office number is 312 473 3772. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, Harvey Mizell, for your time and expertise, sir. And uh, I'll make sure I get uh, your link posted on the website. And uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Well, thanks, Robert. I appreciate you getting the word out. Thank you, you so much. Thank you.